split. Let's begin with any gesture, mudra, or a bow to start. All right, so we'll just start to settle here. You can close your eyes or take a soft gaze, dimming the eyelids. And we start to absorb this moment. Dropping in. It almost feels like gathering sometimes. We're like pulling all the parts of ourselves that are extended and moving outward and performing and doing, doing, doing. And we just start to pull all those parts of ourselves back down into this moment, gathering all the pieces of ourselves to bring the attention, bring the awareness into what's here in ourselves right now. What do we feel? noting the rhythm. The texture. The feeling of being in a body, sitting in a body. In your body. Really just sitting in your legs, feel your legs on the floor. Feel the base of support underneath you. And you can almost feel like a very subtle pushing, like a gathering right underneath the surfaces of your body that are touching the floor. There's like this collection as the body tones and slightly pushes down in order to reach for the ground. And the spine extends upward. It's almost like the top of the head is also just pushing up against the space above it. Just tapping into our edges here and just feeling where we push to reach, where we yield to suspend. And maybe now even taking the hands and just lightly Pressing them down, you can link the fingertips together and lightly just press on the top of the head. Feeling this surface area. You can keep your eyes closed or have them open if you'd like. Either way, we're just feeling this little skull cap. Maybe even just slightly, very, very subtly feeling the top of the head, reaching into the hands. Allow this to help you get a sense of your spine being easy and long. This is super good for posture to just feel 
the lengthening here. We'll keep our hands on our head, but you can unlace the fingers and just start to pull the skin away from the scalp. So tight. It's like there's like a net around the skull and we're just lightly pulling at some of the strings of the net. Hmm. And you can just kind of use your fingertips or use your palms to just start to knead into the back of the brain here. I mean, obviously we're not touching our brains, but it almost feels like a huge relief in the thoughts, in the clamping down. <laughs> yeah. It's like give your brain a massage. Hmm. Make sure you get that nice little area that's right under that bulbous part of the back where the occipital lobe is, right where the tippy tip of the spine meets the atlas. That's this little rocking part of the skull that balances at the tip there. And you can just start to move your head around, feeling that part where the spine meets the skull, the atlas. And you can keep rubbing your fingers around that bulbousy part, just kind of bringing some sensation and relief Whew, to the head. Big old brain carrying so much weight, so many thoughts. And we can almost just feel like uh, letting go here nothing to really worry about just taking a moment to put everything to the side and let's take the fingers now and just bring them to the temples swirling around the temples any amount of pressure you desire you don't have to be forceful or aggressive here this is a time to just take care of your face, your head, your body, your mind. And now we'll take the knuckles and just kind of rub them underneath the cheekbones. There's like a little kind of alcove there. You can even kind of lean forward and just feel the weight the compression, tenderness, listen as the city sounds go by, noticing if any of the sounds made you clench your jaw, <laughs> it's like, oh, that's an anxiety provoking noise, <laughs> and so we can just start to drag the knuckles now down the jaw, lifting the head back up. I'm just I was gonna say, I wanna make that my ringtone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll be fun while driving. <laughs> just, oh my gosh. <laughs> we can ah, breathe in the silence now or somewhat quieter environment. <laughs> dragging the knuckles down the face. It kind of helps to make this like weird fish open mouth, dead fish kind of look. It's like zombie face because it really helps to just release everything. And lucky for you, no one can see you. So it's just me <laughs> looking like this but i'm gonna try not to smile and i'm really gonna drag the skin down my face <laughs> trying not to smile but i know it's funny but it's just an exploration dragging down drag the skin melt the skin 
And then once we're down at the chin, let's just grab the chin with the fingertips. Give it a little rub. And then you could even take the fingers and just press like a button, opening the jaw, pressing right on that flat part of the chin underneath the gums. Ha. Let that be really relieving. Can really kind of release a lot if we just keep pressing on that point. So much tension in the jaw. It's like it almost doesn't want to let go. Letting that go, going back to a little bit more of the dragging of the knuckles, right in that tender spot, right on the jawline. <sighs> Breathing, releasing. All these Zoom conferences and conversations kind of always have to be on otherwise everybody knows that you're not looking you're not paying attention you're not engaged so this is a good time to just disengage that and we can just pull the skin away from the face now like little kids when they do those funny faces we can just make those funny faces here blah blah, blah. It's not just kids. Actors are very used to warming up like this. In the theater world, this is a normal way to look. <laughs> uh, now let's not forget about the eye sockets. Just bringing the fingers kind of around that bony part, right where that ridge is. And we'll just connect with like the bony area. You don't have to dig your fingers into the actual eye socket. That might hurt a little bit, but right where the bone is, it's kind of bumpy. It's like the sinus area. Oh my gosh, there's so much tension in there. It's like, why? So we can spend a little time here. Exploring it, feeling the tension, feeling the tenderness, poking around. Squeezing the bridge of the nose. Maybe pulling on the nose itself a little bit, pull it away from the face. Rubbing on the cartilage. And then we can just do like little raindrops around our new little Rudolph nose after it got nice and compressed there. Little raindrop fingertips, just sprinkle, sprinkle on the face, sprinkle around, sprinkle on the top of the head. Ah, let every little raindrop kind of wash away any worry any doubt any desire for perfectionism we are as we are and it's so relieving to just let things be as they are And bring the tapping or bring just a little bit of squeezing to the back of the neck. You can stay seated upright. Let your spine be kind of straight, feeling the natural curves. 
And just use one hand to just kind of roll around the back of your neck. Your own little personal massage here. You go where it feels good. Trusting your own process. Trusting that your own body may be different from mine or is definitely different. We're all different. So what we like is up to us. We get to decide how to feel here. And finally, let's just hold our head in our hands and just like let the head get really heavy. You can just drop it. It's almost like it's a huge bowling ball and your neck isn't lifting it at all anymore. We can just pretend like, oh, it's gonna fall. But we we got it with our hands. Let it sway back and forth, so heavy. Neck hasn't worked this hard. It doesn't have to work hard at all. Mm, letting the head go. Coming back to an upright position, just to notice, just to feel. What did that do? Are there little edges of the mouth that kind of wanna constrict again? Is the forehead going back to its normal scrutinizing scrunchiness? Can we stay in this open space in the face? Now we'll just take a couple of side stretches. So just taking the left hand and placing it on the top of the head, right fingertips can touch down on the floor, like tented fingers, and we'll just lightly, lightly pull on the neck towards the left. Mm, feeling that nice little tug here, opening up the side. Letting the shoulders be free and loose. Almost like there's little anchors right at the tips of the scapulas on the shoulder blades, the pointy parts. Little anchors pulling them down so that they don't have to rise up and clench really tight. They're just ah. Letting that go, coming back to center. Feeling what that did. And then we'll do that again on the other side, right hand on the top of the head now, left fingertips tented on the floor to ground us. And then a light little weight of the hand pulling on the side of the head. not forcing anything, not pushing too hard. It shouldn't feel sharp. It should feel nice. If it feels sharp, maybe back off a little bit. Mm, 
letting that go. And now if you feel comfortable doing so, we can do some neck circles. So just kind of winding the head around, dropping it back, dropping the chin when you get forward, making them as big or as small as you want, perhaps starting out a bit smaller and then gradually opening it up bigger and bigger. It's nice to close the eyes here from all the looking at screens. Just really allowing a restful space, even if we're in a technological space. And then rotating the neck in the opposite direction. And now we'll stop, let that go. Come back to sit for a moment. Notice again what feels free, what feels spacious. Does anything feel a little bit more bright or alive? Is it more noticeable now what's clenching? What might be a little bit harder to place? So let's take some of that free space movement and bring it down into the rest of our body. So let's start coming onto the belly. Coming, bring the arms out into a T shape. Flat against the floor. Your head can go to either side. Feel the organs letting go. Everything is just pouring into the front of the body. It's that sense of gathering or collecting. Now, all along the front surfaces of you. And so now we'll do one of my personal favorites. This is the extended wing. So keeping the left arm out to a T the way that it is, we'll lift the right foot and taking the knee up and spinning over that left shoulder. Place the right sole of the foot on the floor behind the left leg. So it's pointing upwards, the knee is pointing up. And then this right hand can chill out in the front. Your head can just rest lazily on the side of the left temple. Or you can take that right hand and kind of reach back and feel for the left fingertips. If you want to clasp the hands, that's a little bit more active, a lot more sensation here. Or you can just kind of let it hang behind you. Fingertips don't have to touch. We're just going for that nice compression to the left shoulder. That space right behind the scapula, the muscles there. There's so many muscles there. Oh my gosh, in the back, connecting to the front. And so perhaps here, we're just livening them up, 
giving them a good amount of compression and stress to rehydrate, to get some blood pumping. To dissolve some of the sticky fascia that built up while we were sleeping. And again, while you're here in your extended wing, it might be nice to close your eyes. All of this time, looking at screens, looking out, the whole time we're awake, we're basically opening our eyes and looking and looking and looking. It's okay if you want to not look so hard right now. Maybe turn towards that inner landscape, looking behind the eyes, looking inside the heart. This is a really nice counter to the posture of sitting at a desk, sitting in front of a screen, holding a cell phone. The shoulders are like, oh my gosh, thank you. Nothing to perform right now. Coming back to the face, noticing again where our habits are. How after some time, we start to shrink that space that we created. Maybe fluttering the lips a little bit. Letting go. And keeping your awareness on your face, letting it stay smoothed out as you transition back to the belly, spinning back around, unhooking, and slowly moving back to the floor, keeping the face soft and gentle, extending the arms out wide again and turning your head to face the opposite direction. Ooh. 
take note of the hands here. I feel like there might be some more movement in the left hand. It's the difference between the left and the right. And I'm going to switch around so I can still face you. And now I'll take it to the right side. I'm keeping the right arm teed out long, lifting that left foot up towards the sky and spinning that leg around, up and over, stepping right outside that right leg from the inner thigh, actually, it's where we're stepping. And that left hand can chill out wherever it wants, let the head and neck be soft, bringing more or less sensation. Watching the body settle here. Perhaps a little bit uncomfortable at first, but maybe, maybe with time, gravity and breath, it starts to morph into something else. A sweet, warm sensation. Lighting up the whole back body. Lighting up that right shoulder. Letting go of the muscles so that the joints and the tendons and the ligaments and the bones can all receive the benefits of this long, still pose. Taking some conscious time to move the body in a direction that it may not be moving most days. It could be about all that time that the shoulders are collapsed, rolling forward punched over the heart and the lungs. And so we're countering that, it's bringing ah, some openness to the chest, some breath into the lungs, like the antidote to technological postures. The antidote to the work day. To the work week.
Yeah. When you're ready, start to roll back. Trying to remember the softness of the face again. Not clenching anything as you roll back to the center. And this time you can bring your arms in and rest your cheek down on top of your hand. There's blood pumping through the arms. The blood is making its way back to the spaces where it was slightly constricted, bringing some fresh healing into those areas. New oxygen, new space, hydration, lubrication. I'll just push up onto all fours and again trying not to squeeze and tighten everything as we go if it happens it happens we have to use our muscles but we can try to be easy as we move instead of tightly moving through everything in the day unconsciously which is a habit that I definitely have so we are not alone in this, but we'll come to all fours. And just take a couple cat cows. Oh, arching the spine. Oh, breathing, letting out any noises that may have been trapped in there. And expressing ourselves as we just relieve this tension and move to find the pleasure of relief. Oh. Breathing with each inhalation and exhalation. Moving with each inhalation and exhalation. That's what I meant to say. Now keeping the knees where they are, adding some padding underneath if you need to. Could feel really good to have some cushion there. But keeping the knees where they are and keeping the hips where they are, we'll walk the hands about a foot ahead of us and just start to drop the chest down for puppy pose. The chest doesn't have to reach the floor. The fingers can slide out a little bit more. You see the thoracic spine here, the middle spine is getting a nice, nice stretch. How is the face now? Just letting that spaciousness surround you and envelop you. And we can roll back forward, undoing the puppy pose, coming back to a neutral spine, maybe swaying back and forth. And then we'll come to sit again. And we'll do a little bit of a hip massage. So let's start with the left foot, bringing it up. You can give it a little squeeze, a little pat. Say hello, foot. Hi. 
Wow. You're tight too. You've been working really hard walking around. Keeping me upright. And then lovingly place the sole of your foot around or inside that right elbow crease. Hooking the left elbow around the, the left knee. And we'll rock it like a baby. Little baby leg. And perhaps here, you might have to extend the right leg out long to keep balance. You might have to like kickstand it out. And then we'll just let the left hand drop down and we'll start to roll around that left hip. And you know where it is when it feels like you've found that spot that you wanna hang out in for a while using the floor as massage hands, really digging into those areas, that outer hip. The outer hip loves this, or at least mine do. Feeling, breathing, connecting with the tissues in this joint, moving it around, taking it for a ride, feeling the pelvic bowl and all the parts. And again here, it might be nice to close the eyes and just think about the body, all the little parts that are connected here, how it works in harmony and unison to keep us all living our lives and although our bodies are different, there's like this structure that is the same. So what's in there? How is it connected? Now letting that go, bring the feet out in front and just give them a little shake. Give the legs a nice shake. And we'll take that to the other side, grabbing the right foot now. Oh, hello. Oh, yes. I would like to give you a nice massage. <laughs> For those who are not here, Annie is laughing at least, so I'm not alone. <laughs> Give it a nice little squeeze and a hug. With my, I was gonna say with my very like serious faced <laughs> like Google image. <laughs> She's laughing. She's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell, but it's happening. <laughs> and then we can rock our little leg baby again. <laughs> I think that there are really sacred and serious parts of yoga but like everything has like a lightness to it as well. There's gotta be a lightheartedness in here. Otherwise we take ourselves way too seriously. That's why we do things like rock our leg babies. <laughs> and then we can just start to extend that left leg out and find, oh, What's going on in this hip, in this outer hip? Wow, that's the spot for me, right there on the side. Where is it for you? Where do you feel like you could just live in that little compression, opening up the space 
in the legs, feeling all those little, little tiny tissues. They're opening up. They're making some room. They're moving around. That's enough of that. Letting that go. Shaking the leggies out. And we'll end today with a set of twists. So we're going to come all the way to our backs. Start to settle here. And then just pulling the knees up towards you and letting them fall stacked to the left. Maybe you have to adjust the hips a tiny bit, looking over to the right. Not gripping, noticing what the face is doing. This twist, nice and deep for you. If you prefer a different kind of twist today, it's also acceptable. Anything goes really, just suggestions. Remembering to bring the ground to meet you. If there are parts that feel like need a little bit more support. Under the knees, under the shoulders, in between the knees, under the head. Sending some loving breath to your being. Nothing to prove, nothing to gain or lose. Just arriving in the twist over and over and over again.
fun twisting. Coming back to the center. And taking your legs up and over to the other side. Connecting all parts of you. Nothing to manage. There's no right or wrong. Freedom to be exactly as you are. Letting the thoughts drain out of the head. Finding that sense of ease in your movement as you return to the center. Take any wiggling or shaking or mooshing into the ground, finding some wiggly final stretches. And then arriving again in Shavasana. A corpse pose. A time to really allow ourselves to let go. To embrace what is. to allow things to be as they are. Perhaps taking one last squeeze around the scalp, pulling the skin away from the head. Oh, wow. <sighs> Sweet release.
frame to scrunch the face a little bit, like a little bunny. Swiggling the nose, wiggling the mouth. Make the face nice and tight, 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 tight. And then open the mouth and the eyes, everything wide. And then shake it all out. And then let the body maybe just give it a big squeeze, 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 and then let everything out. Big stretch, open everything up. And then shake it all out. Giving yourself a nice hug to one side, if you haven't already. Curling up, embracing yourself, thanking this body, thanking this mind. There's only one you, so I'll appreciate it. We'll come up to sit to close our practice today. Dedicating the merits of our work, of our practice to all living beings in the hopes that we may find justice and liberation for all. Liberating ourselves in the hopes that we may liberate others. May all beings be happy. May all beings be safe. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be at peace. Sending it out with a loving sigh. And then closing with a gesture or a mudra of your choice or a bow. Thank you. Thank you, Sadie. You're welcome.